Hello guys, welcome back to Sand VFX. Today here we are back with a new tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is for the beginners who are just started to use Max or they have just started to use particle flow inside Max. So we're just getting started using a particle flow in 3ds Max. So those of you who have already used particle flow before and used some of these operators, um, I I must say that it's just a waste of time for you to watch it um, because I'm just going to show the basics starting of using pflow today so let's begin we can access our pflow from just geometry down to particle systems and pf source you can just create a icon and then you can click this particle view in order to get your particle view where you'll be working often Okay, the another way to create is go to create particles and particle flow source and drag it. Okay, another way to access particle view is by pressing the six key on your keyboard. From there, you'll get into particle view. Okay, since we have create we created two different sources before, so we have got this. So I can just select all of them and just delete them. Okay, so this is our particle view. You can also create your particle source from here drag and drop this standard flow and you'll get your particle view okay so beginning here we have all the sets of operators that will be connecting t uh, with each other to create a uh, required particle system from here you have some options right here and around here you'll get all the settings of s different operators here is the dip description for every operator. If you are, don't know what those operators do, you can also find it from here as well. Okay, so now let us begin by creating a simple particle system. First of all, we'll just go ahead with a standard flow. This is the basic uh, uh, flowing system. Uh, if you create your PF source from here, you'll get this standard flow which have already linked a few operators together to create a simple particle system so you have all the particles falling down okay so first of all you have this pf source this is your icon or uh, which controls your icon you can also unlink the unlink these two um, then you'll not see any particles into your system so this is what controls your icon from here you can control like logo size or length and width of your icon, icon type to box or s circle or sphere, whatever you wish for. Let it be a rectangle. And you can also show your logo or icon if you don't want, you can hide them as well. You also have this quantity multiplier. I'll come, come back to that a little bit later. And also, uh, this I'll come back. Okay. So here render you can also s set how you want your um, objects to uh, sorry your particles to render like if you don't want to render you can press to none or bounding box or geometry I'll demonstrate them once we connect this event into there okay so this is PFS and here we have got the event so once we connect this uh, our source to a event there comes our particle okay so here even this event controls how our particles behave it the first one is birth which allows our particle to burn so they start to fall down slowly here we have emit start at 0 and emit stop at 30 that means our particle will start to burn at 0 frame and it will stop to to emit from frame 30 so you can see that it has no particle coming down after frame 30 okay. you can also set the amount whatever you wish for you can set it to thousands or more the more you increase that the slower your processing is gonna be okay I left back uh, this quantity multiplier so I have seen a lot of particles right here but our viewport percent is just 50 percent so let me set it to 100 percent now I can see all my particles into my viewport. So this is very handy when you are dealing with large amount of particles. 
let's say if you are dealing with kind of like millions of particles then if you have 100% view then your computer will be very slow so you might want to reduce this to 10 or maybe 1 if you are dealing with lots of particles if you set it to 1 you will have very less particles into your viewport but still if you render out you can see all your particles because our render percent is 100 still if you set it to 1 as well then you'll see very less particles into your render as well okay let me set it back to 50 and 100 which is the default value so here is particle amount upper limit so this uh, gives us um, to control how many particles can our source handle I have got thousand particles right here uh, here I have upper limit about hundreds of thousands so I cannot increase my amount more than that so for that I can just set my upper limit to an unlimited number and don't worry it does not slow your system at all it is just kind of like uh, just uh, increasing up your limit to unlimited amount so that you can uh, when you are using operators like spawn and so you may have lots and lots of particles so this won't be a problem at that time if you increase that uh, to an uh, unlimited number or like that okay so here is a birth and we can set our birth amount or we can also set our birth rate so at amount I set thousand so it has uh, thousand particles from 0 to 30 frames and if I increase the image stop to 100 then it will again emit only thousand particles from 0 to 100 frames okay but if I set the rate then it will uh, emit at a rate of 60 from 0 to 100 frames so now we have total of 200 one and 201 particles if I bump this up to 100 then we have 334 particles so it depends upon the how many frames if I increase the frame to 150 then your particle count increases to 501 so that's what red does if you set it to amount the total will never increase even if you increase the frame stop image stop to 200 you just have thousand particles but with red as you go on increasing your image stop your particle count increases okay let us set it back to 100 an amount of thousand okay the next one we have is position icon so if we delete this uh, you can just right click and delete we can also rename or we can also turn off this event let me just turn off once that I've turned off that there's no particles because position icon determines from where our uh, particles emit so let me turn on back again now we have our particles so from here we can uh, control our emitter so right now this icon is our emitter so we can also lock our particles to emitter so that the particle sticks only around our icons uh, just near like that okay you can also inherit emitter this is uh, useful in case of uh, animated uh, animated emitter if you have your emitter animated you might it might be useful you can also set uh, different locations like pivot so that the particles just flow from a point or you can set to vertices so our icon has four vertices kerner it is emitting from their edges uh, let me just bump this up to about 10,000 up oh, sorry 10,000 so it's emitting from edges now you can see a kind of square box like that or you can set to surface from all surface and volume okay so all the settings are not so necessary so I will be just explaining some important one as only then we have got speed let me turn off speed as just as soon as we turn off speed our particles are just hanging around our icon because it does not have speed to move or fall down or move into any direction so speed helps to control where our particles move so default it flows down you can also make it flow up by checking this reverse option you can control the speed of your particles you can make it faster 
okay it's very fast or you can also slow it down you can slow it down as well okay, you can see there okay slow down now or you can set the variation of your speed so that some particles move faster and some particles are slower you can also control your direction through speed like along icon arrow or icon center out you can just experiment how different uh, way looks like so right now the particles are kind of shooting inside okay you can see let me create my icon size up bigger logo size uh, this one as well so that we can view better okay now you can see that our particles are moving inward I can change it to I can arrow out so that our particles should oops, they are not shooting out let me just turn off reverse okay. now you can see that our particles are shooting outside similarly we can just set it to random 3d so that our particles fly around into our space randomly and random horizontal or inherit previous so they all give different kind of look to your particles Okay, and you can also set uh, divergence for your speed so if I set the divergence our particle diverse in different ways uh, let me set it to pivot and then speed at zero the particles are coming from one point and I can just diverse them so that we have got a point from where particles are emitting and then uh, they are diversing in different areas Okay. then we have got this rotation actually it's not so useful in most cases but it comes default uh, let me go to display um, this is also one thing that we necessary is very necessary for our particles to view so if we don't have display we won't see any particles turn on but we don't need rotation and this shape in order to view our particles so we can just turn them off and on if whatever we use for let me turn them on both let me go to display first and I'll come back to rotation again so from here you can view how your particles uh, see in the viewport you can set the types to dots to see it in dots or geometry since we have this shape we are we can see in the square box it is controlled by this shape here uh, you can also set it to diamond and so on streaks triangles okay let me set it to geometry and let me control this uh, cubes with our shape so if from here we can set our cube or different type of 3d objects nodes okay music nodes or kind of hard shapes so you can look it's looking pretty good let us play around with something else random 3d okay and also pump the speed divergence up let me reduce my particle count to 1000 okay so we have got some hearts flying around so we can control its size okay and also we can scale them uh, vary, vary them okay so some are small and some are bigger kind of like that okay that was shape dot it allows our particles to convert into a 3d objects um, you can also render them out you can see it's rendered and rotation now uh, if I turn it off then you can see all our particles are flat so as soon as I turn them it uh, randomized the rotation of the object but they are not moving around so it does not animate and our object does not ro keeps on rotating as it moves on but it stays at a single point s our same angle throughout all the time it just randomizes the rotation of our particles so that is the basic setups uh, what we get if we create our PF source defaultly 
So as soon as I deleted that, you can see that our connection goes off as well. So I can just delete these both of them and let's go ahead and create our particle using the empty flow. We can just drag in an empty flow and here we have just this render node. Then we can create our own event and connect it to that. Like we did in previous standard flow, we can know that we will be needing a birth event, position icon and speed which are the most necessary and also a display. So we can just drag all these four nodes out and create our stuff. So a birth, then we can just connect it right here. Okay, then we'll need a position icon. Okay, a speed. Okay, and then what we needed was, okay, I guess that's it. So now we can see our particles and then we can we can control it from here on whatever we wish for increase our particle count and so on so this was how we get started with particle flow those who are new to pf source or particle flow in 3ds max it's a good start for you guys to create these particle systems and there are lots and lots of operators uh, inside particle flow you also can get uh, some additional uh, plugins or toolbox for pflow which have got a lot more operators and a lot more control to our particle systems here you can also find some additional uh, operators like femfx birth krakatoa realflow they comes as we install additional plugins like realflow and krakatoa femfx they are added as soon as we install them so it is a helper for those uh, uh, plugins we can use them along with those plugins so we have a great control over our particles using PF source it is a very powerful tool to create any other particle system and explaining each and every operators now gonna take a lot of time so I'll be soon be coming back with a few more uh, operators few operators like uh, delete force and other operators and I'll try to explain all the operators in uh, next tutorials coming up more tutorials I'll explain one by one slowly but I must say that even I don't know all these operators what all these operators do because uh, we won't be using most of them in most cases so it might be, all are useful in some cases but I have not used all of them uh, till now so I'll just be explaining those operators which I have uh, used and which are very useful. So for now it's just a starting point. I hope you guys have learned something, those who are new. And I'll come back soon with uh, explaining a few of the useful operators. See you then. Have a great time.